Okay, greetings again, everybody. Um, we're going to do the final plane geometry drawing. And it will be a cycloid. And we should all know what a cycloid is from grade 10. Well, let me do a quick explanation. A cycloid is a point. Is a point on a circle rotating on a straight line. And it's plotting the point. And it will look like a semicircle, a curve like. Alright, so the circle that we're going to draw the cycloid for today will be um, 50 millimeters in radius or 100 millimeters in diameter. So I'm going to draw the circle right here. So as I'm going to select my zero layer, my construction layer, and I'm going to select circle, the command. I'm going to put the circle the center where I want it. Then I'm going to type the radius. So the diameter of the circle is actually 100 millimeters. So this is the, the radius, 50. So this is the circle. There are two things that you could have done. Let me delete this. No, no, not yet. And then after drawing the circle, you are going to draw center lines through the circle. So you draw, this is how you can do it. You select the center line layer, you select the line command and you pass the cursor through the circle center to for it to show you the center if it's not showing you the center just take the mouse click on the o snap and ensure that center is clicked all right so it's showing you the center you pass the mouse through it you don't click it and then you pass it upwards so you see the tracking line then you draw the line through it and you do the same thing Select the line command again, pass it through the center again. So there you have the center lines passing through the circle. You could have you could have done this initially. You could have drawn this initially. Um draw the lines first randomly. You don't have to measure it yet. And then you select the circle command next so I select change the layer to the zero layer then select the circle command and put the center where the lines intersect then you type 50 so you can do it either way but then you have to now adjust the center lines what I like to do with my center lines is to ensure that the center of this line, which is here, is intersecting with the center where they meet. So I click on each line and pull the center of each line to the center of the circle or the intersection of the line. All right, less room for error that way. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is to divide this circle in 12. And this is how you do it. Right, this is how you do it. I am going to take this line. I'm going to select this line. You can select it before or after. I'm going to type array. The command that we're used to right, we're going to use to divide the circle in 12 is called array. So we type array. Or better yet, this is what we can do before we even put in the center line. So draw a random line, so it make work easier, using the zero layer, passing through the center, not a random line. This is the line that we are going to use to divide it in 12. Then we type array. After we type array, we select the line, then we press enter. If you notice, the command line is a guide. So after, after I type array, let me do that again, it is first thing is asking me to select the object. This is the line that I'm going to use to divide the circle in 12. And I press enter and it's now asking me and select array type or enter array type. By default it is on path. I want it to be polar because I'm using the center as the pole to divide the line, the circle. So I type polar or you can type PO or you can, you know, or click. I'm going to type polar then press enter. Then it's asking you to specify the center point of array, which is right here, the center. 
Now by default, it is divided, dividing the circle in six. Now I am going to type items to choose the amount of divisions. I type items, then I press enter. And then by default, it's set to six. I'm going to type 12, then enter. Now you can escape. Now if you realize it is divided in 12, but if when you click on one of the lines, you realize that one of the lines, the line is, um, they are connected. So you, you, you press, select the lines, press escape. If you cannot find the escape command, you can type, not escape, sorry, explode. If you cannot find the explode command here, you just type explode and press enter. Explode, then press enter. It will explode the lines. Now what you can now go ahead and do is the vertical and horizontal line. You go back and change them to center lines. If you notice, there are some lines that are behind the center lines. You can delete them. And if you may realize that there are lines over lines. So if you delete this line, you realize that the lines still remain. Why? Because the lines were doubled. So if you realize that you delete a line, you just press Ctrl Z to undo. But you can delete the double lines over. All right. So this is what you have. You divide a circle in 12 equal parts using AutoCAD. Now remember when drawing a cyclide, we have to draw the circumference of the circle. And the circumference is given by multiplying pi times the diameter. The diameter of the circle is 100. So multiply 100 by pi. Pi is 22 over 7. That is 3.1428514. So we multiply that value by 100. And the answer will be 314. So you use the... You're using your zero layer. You select the line command. And at the base of the circle, you're going to draw the line to the right. And you're going to type 314 dot two eight five seven one four that is the answer when you multiply pi times the diameter the diameter is 100 pi is 3.1428714 okay so this is the answer this is the length of the line it should be this length all right so once you have this length You're going to divide this line in 12 equal parts. So you divide the circle in 12 equal parts. Now you're going to divide a line in 12 equal parts. And we should have known, we should know how to do this by now. So we select the line command and we draw a random slope. I normally recommend 30 millimeters, um, 30 degree, a 30 degree slope. So you set this to 30. You don't have to. And let me show that show you that you don't have to. So I'm going to draw a random line random line right no specific measurement then i'm going to use the arc command I click the arc command and i'm going to it is asking me for the start point of the arc i don't want the start point i want the center so i press enter c enter that is and then you have to read the commands each time so you see what they're asking for so you understand how to use them better so now I'm clicking the center of the, uh, the arc. And then I am going to swing anti-clockwise. If you swing clockwise, as I said before, it's going to create a circle. So I'm going to swing 12 degrees. Since this line is this long, I'm going to assume one twelfth of it. So I'm going here. So. so I swing and make one arc. This is one swing. In order to get this swing further down, this is what you're going to do. You're going to click on the arc, then you click copy. Once you click copy, you click where you started before. Then you click where the arc intersects the circle. You have to zoom in to find this point. So you don't want to click it on the, the center of the arc. You need to where the arc intersects. The center of the line, rather. You don't want it there. So you have how much you got now? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 
12. If you do this and you realize that the art go beyond the line, you just extend the line using the extend command. It works like trim. But don't pull the line to extend it unless your line was set to an angle that it would change the angle while you're pulling it. So once you have done this now, you have divided your line in 12 equal parts. And count and ensure that it is 12. Once you, do, once you have done that, you select line again using this layer, uh, the same layer. Look where it intersects at the end and you are going to pull that to the end of the line here. The end of the circumference line. So once you have done this, you are going to copy this line all along here. So you select the line, you select copy, you put it at the base point here, right here so, then you know, paste it along, ensure that you are pacing it at the X, not at the triangle, at the X where the line intersects the arc. You go along the line, going along the line, it's easier to do this when you're zooming. For best results, use a mouse, not a trackpad. If you have to use a trackpad, then no problem. So now you have done this. So this is what you're going to do next. You're going to trim the excess. And by now you should know how to use the trim command. So once you have done this, this is what you're going to do next. Um, this line at the top, you're going to also pull it across. And then pull this one up and where they meet you trim off the excess so that's what you're going to do the next thing you're going to do is um, all these points on the circle they are supposed to go across to me this line but look at this thing now this point and this point are will be shared so once you do these over the left side the right side will be taken care of automatically. So I'm pulling across the left side points. The one, the zero point is already gone across. So this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and back to zero. So once you do the points, the eleven, the ten, the nine, the eight, the seven, they are they are going to take care of the other points. Um, and I'll bring across this here if um this point i'm going to use this center line as this for this point as well and you'll see what i mean further down the line so i'm bringing across and i'm bringing across all right and then also i am going to bring across this bring upwards rather upwards 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 you can also to save yourself some time just click on the line click copy and then copy it across instead of drawing them up all right so before we reach the the final step or the penultimate step we are going to label i always encourage labeling so we can we know we should know how to label by now i'm going to show you once more you click a oh by the way go on to the dimension in a labeling layer you click a some of you, some of you might see multi-line or single line you can use anyone for this particular all right so i'm going to click where i want the the the, the the labeling to be i'm going to label this point zero it's asking for specify the start the first point so i click and asking to specify the opposite corner you're not going to specify the opposite corner you're going to specify the height instead so you press h enter then type the height i'm going to use four as my height and i press enter now you specify the opposite corner then i click then i'm going to type zero and there you have i click outside and I, there's my zero this is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to copy this point all around. So this is point one. Oh, you can lock off the snap because sometimes when you want to click it here, the snap is on, so you click somewhere else. So this is the snap down here. So look where the mouse is. Snap. So you click and you put the points where you want. You can even lock off the polar because sometimes it interferes with things. 
and then you click to label the points right now all the points are labeled zero but they won't be labeled zero for long see you come around you come around come around come around all right so this is one two three four five six is at the top and please note that this cyclone is for one revolution and basically what I should have done is label point P point P is right here point P is a zero point that is the point that is going to be plotted with. right so this is eight this is nine this is ten this is eleven all right and zero is p I'll, as likewise we are supposed to label point one two three four Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and P again because P will end here. For one revolution, you're going to start. It will start and end at this, at on the line that is rotating. On. So this is one. Quite a little bit of um, labeling. The reason why I'm labeling is for you to see exactly what is happening. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven, and the end point P. All right. I'm going to pull this over a bit. Oh, by the way, turn on back your snap on stuff, your snap on your polar, so that the lines draw correctly. Alright, I wanted you guys to show you center lines, but um, pull this over to line. Well, it's not. Well, let me use region. If your drawing don't look like at a circle, you just use region. Alright, so that's where it's supposed to go. Alright, so as to not be confused. Alright, so there's uh, just one more thing that is supposed to label. I'm going to copy these points. Just I'm going to select these points. You can label it one by one if you want, but I'm doing it the quicker way now. So this is I'm going to copy. I'm going to select the copy command. Then put this from P to the center. Why? I am labeling this. So this is C. This point is a C the center and then this is C1 C2 C3 C4 C5 C6 C7 C8 Hold on. C9. So all I'm doing is double clicking the the, the, the the text, put in the letter, the cursor where I want it, then I type C. Then C11. I don't need to put C12 or C. All right. So this is what I'm going to do now. This is the penultimate step. Penultimate meaning second to last step. This is the crucial step, the plotting step. 
and then the tracing step will be after all right so let's go um you have these lines go up to intersect these lines all right so these lines help you to find the center of the circle at each point as it rolls 12 points and then at each point you're going to match so so the, this line sorry this point will be the first point that you're going to swing an arc point one then point two point three point four all of the circle points and where they cut the corresponding lines that's where you'll get the arc remember swing anti-clockwise so let me give you an example so you're going to select the arc command then I press C enter because you want the center so let me go again arc select uh, arc command it's asking to specify start point I don't want that C enter specify the center now you're starting with C1 you're going all the way to C11 so C1 and then it's asking you to specify the start of the arc you are going to cut this line right you're cutting this line you're cutting line one this is line one it is also line 11 but you're cutting it and you're cutting it to the left so up, what you're going to do is to type 50 that is the length of, of the, the, the radius of the arc the same radius for the circle when you type that now you can swing if you notice it's swinging this direction if it don't touch this let me see if it touch it uh, let me show you another way or you can do it as well so let me select my O layer instead of swinging an arc you can draw a circle right at c1 and type 50. see that so this is c1's circle c1's circle let me do that again you click the circle command and you put it at c1 and you type 50. now you are going to look where that circle intersects with line one which line is line one this line because it's coming from here it is also line 11 so this is 1 and 11 2 10 3 9 4 8 5 7 and 6 is at the top so circle 1 is intersecting with line 1 so notice and click both of them here so before you go any further you're going to use the circle command click the center of the circle and draw a small circle you can type one as the radius so you're plotting you you found that point so this is what you're going to do now you're going to click on this you can do it two ways click on this circle copy it from c1 say so you, you click copy click the circle press enter click c1 you're pulling it now to c2 right here so C2, now you have a second circle. So click that second circle, ensure that the center is at C2. Then you click line 2. Now line 2 is here. So this is what you're going to do now. Use the circle command, draw another point here. Right here, where these meet? Let me show you where they meet. Right here and right here. So we know. So we're going to click the circle command, click here. Then we type one, that's the radius where you, that we're using for these small circles. So we have two points. So we're going to go along the line. C, copy C2 circle, or any circle for that matter. Copy from C2 to C3. Then you're going to do the same thing. Click on the circle, C3 circle. Then click on line three. See line three? So they are going to meet here right here so so you use the circle again and draw a one millimeter radius circle so you have three points so far plotting so you notice this is the curve all right 
there's there there there's an there's another way you can do it. The plastic go all the way, but some persons who understand it now, they just copy this circle. Copy. Let me copy. C three. Copy to C four. Copy to C five. Copy to C six. C seven. C eight. C nine. C10, C11. I don't need C12. All right. If you notice, everything before it reaches six, I'm plotting it the leftmost point because this circle, which is C1, and this line, which is line one, it also intersects over here. But I'm choosing the point to the left. It's when I reach six now, and I'm doing seven, I'm choosing the points to the right. So. This is what I can do. If you want, you can create a new layer so these points look different. Um, let, 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 me, let me put this. Let me put this in my dimension layer. Let me use my dimension layer so that life can be easier. So now you're seeing the points separate now. So. When I do it this way, it's a bit more confusing. So now we have to find C4. I ensure that circle 4 is on C4. Then I click line 4. Then I draw the circle. Right here. So. Alright, let me change to my dimension layer. I'm still drawing the old layer. Dimension layer. Then look for circle 5 you can use down here to find it circle 5 will touch number 5 down here click it circle 5 look for line 5 right and they intersect where right here so you click circle and you draw right so there are five points now circle 6 click line 6 will be at the top right here so where they intersect here now you go, you're going to go to seven now circle seven see, see center c7 line seven remember line seven and line five is the same line so each line is going down the line now. so and you have this point and you have this point you're using the right point because it passes six now right here then 8, this is line 8, I come down, line is coming down now, and they meet here, so you draw, right here, then you have line, circle 9, line 9, they meet here, circle, 10, two more points, This is where they meet, and I know. And then this one, circle 11, line 11. Then I. So, this point where the circle is over, um, surrounding, those are the points. The, the first point will be this. And the last point will be this. So, the last step now is going to be selecting your outline once you select your outline you're going to select spline if you're not seeing it you type s p l i n e you click spline then you're going to click the first point second point third point well what well, well point p then first point then second point then third point the points in order how you plot them so you're going across. You can use the circle, you can use the arc. The arc may be a bit more difficult. Alright, when you finish, you might do this and you do it in vain. So ensure that you don't press escape when it finish. If you press escape, you're going to come off and you need to draw over the arc again. So you're going to press enter. Once you do that, you have the cycloid. 
So basically, this circle is rolling along this line, and point P is changing position and it's forming a curve. So when it rolls one revolution, it ends here. If it rolls half a revolution, it would stop here. If it rolls one and a half revolution, it would go like this, then go like this and stop up in the air. Two revolutions, it come back down. So it will go one, two. So this is the third. This is the third drawing. And this is what I want you guys to do. You need to label all the three drawings. So you're going to click text. You should know how to do this by now. Um, I can use a text size of 20. And then you type crane hook. And this is a crane hook. Uh, I wonder if I can make this smaller. Let me make this smaller, the text. So you can double click on the text, highlight it, and, and up here I change 20. Click out 20 and put 50. Crane hook, and in brackets I put tangency. You can extend this. Uh, this is a topic tangency right and then copy you can copy this over here so and you can rename it so this is now um this is a pentagon and the topic is Enlargement and reduction. You can make them even smaller because they may look big. You can go 10. That's up to you. Alright, and then you copy this over here, and then this last topic will be, this is a cycloid you're drawing, and the topic that it comes under is loci, right, so these are the three drawings that are coming under plane geometry, plane geometry. We have three more drawings to do for solid geometry. That means I'll make three more videos. Okay, so stay tuned and have a good day.